11. Fabrics, Foliations, and Lineations. Start off with some terminology for tectonic fabric. This is fabric specifically caused by tectonic activity, which is different than the fabric that we would get from the formation of the rocks that has nothing to do with stresses from tectonic activity. This is all about stress-induced fabric. So the first term to define is fabric. This is a geometric arrangement of features in the rock. So there is a, a regularness to the orientation of stuff, you know, features, whether it's minerals, cracks, colors, layers, but some feature in the rock is arranged in a regular way. That's fabric. Foliation is planar fabric. So, you know, like think of sheets in, of paper in a folio, a pad of paper. They're planar, they're sheets of paper, and the fabric is that they're layered all oriented the same way. A lineation is a linear element of fabric. Like if you have a bunch of pencils in a pencil box, you have lineations because each pencil is a linear type object. Cleavage. These are planar splits in the rock. This is a term you should be very familiar with already. Axial plane cleavage. This is cleavage, a planar split in the rock, in line with a fold axis. So if that cleavage happens to line up with a fold axis, we can call it axial plane cleavage. On the other hand, cross-cutting cleavage is cleavage that cuts across a fold axis. A migmatite is a semi-chaotic mix of layers due to partial melting. So you had layers, you get partial melting, it makes it semi-chaotic because with some melting some stuff gets messed up, but it was only partial melting so some of it still is layered. And then texture. This is the pattern of crystal axes. You know, are they lined up? Are they at specific angles? You know, what's going on there? And there are even more terms, but these are the kind of overarching key terms. Taking a look more closely, fabric. Again, geometric arrangement of components. You can see in this photograph, for example, that the orientation seems to be lining up in an up-down direction, but there are clearly some large things and some small things. But the overall orientation is in an up-down direction. The elements that make up the fabric can be grains, it can be clasts, it can be crystals. In this photo we've got a couple of those things, like the large white thing here is a large clast. Primary fabric is fabric that forms during the formation of the rock. So supposing we have some sedimentary layers forming and they're very fine laminations in some limestone. So you've got some little black or brown thin layers that are planar and they formed as that limestone was being deposited because there was a little bit of silt in there. That would be a primary fabric, all those planar layers. Tectonic fabric is what comes later. After the rock is already there, it's been there for a long time, and tectonic activity comes along and changes it. This creates tectonic fabric. The tectonic fabric and primary fabric are usually, I am stressing this, usually 
easy to tell apart. Primary fabric has no folds, it has no kinks, it's not including fractures, it's all about how stuff was deposited. Or, in the case of an igneous rock, how it cooled. Tectonic fabric has stress-related features in it. Orientation of grains to line up with the stress axes, flattening of grains, cracks, smearing, folding, fracturing, stuff like that. Now, to distinguish between foliation and lineation is not always easy. If we only have one face of, like, say, a road cut, we may or may not be able to tell if features we're seeing are linear or planar. If you look at the left-hand side of each of these blocks, they look very similar. We see red lines. We're seeing on the left block, we're seeing the edge of one of the planar foliation surfaces. On the right-hand block, we're seeing the edge of a linear feature, of a lineation. If we have a second side that's not parallel to the first side, that's when we can start to distinguish them quite clearly. Because in the planar um, features, we're still seeing lines. In the lineations, now we're seeing points. We're seeing the end of the pencil, so to speak. Now, of course, depending what angle our surfaces are at relative to the linear features, it may not be perfect little circles or hexagons or whatever shape the crystal or other linear thing is in there, but we'll be able to tell that it's not a large planar feature. Now, fabric is at different um, size levels within a rock. Sometimes you can see uh, fabric with your you know, naked eye, but if you zoom in with a microscope, you see something different. Or if you step back and look at it from a distance, you see something different. So we have continuous and spaced fabric. In continuous fabric, at any scale, you see the same pattern. You see everything is oriented in the same direction all the way down to the grain size and all the way up to the you know, macro scale. In spaced fabric, you'll see different patterns in the spaces between the primary fabric elements. So if we look at this bottom rock here, we see up down black stripes. Okay, what about the white space? Well, as we zoom in, we see that, oh, that white space has kind of chaotic orientations. And if we zoom even further in, we see, yep, it's really chaotic in there. So that's different than in the upper picture, where no matter how far in we zoom, we see a regular orientation in the up-down direction. Also, we can look at different types of tectonic fabric called tectonites. We can have L-type and S-type. This is based on the planar versus linear. S-type tectonites, or S-tectonites, are foliated and split into sheets. So these are planar features, and it can peel off or break off sheets, kind of like peeling off pages from a folio or portfolio. Um, it's kind of like a mica, but it's not the same thing. That's a mineral that forms that way. Now we're talking about a rock that's getting these S-type uh, foliations. L-tectonites are linear. It's breaking the rock into rods. And it is, of course, possible in nature, because nature doesn't like to be 
pure bimodal, it likes to throw everything at us, we can have LS tectonites that are both foliated and lineated. So it can break into sheets, but even those sheets can break down into linear rods. Now cleavage, in this case we're talking about cleavage within the rock, not specific individual mineral crystals, is a secondary fabric element. This is formed under low temperature conditions and the rock tends to split along planes. Now trying to find a nice image of cleavage for you reminded me that searching for cleavage in Google is not a safe search term to do at work or at school. Even adding in words like cleavage rock fabric not very safe. Be careful if you're trying to find pictures of this in a place where you don't want to be embarrassed. However, I persevered. I found you rock cleavage. You can see here bedding planes going side to side slightly up to the right and then the cleavage is cutting across the beds is these long straight cracks that we see in the rock here and again it's forming planes so we have a flat plane this way and then a flat plane outwards kinda like steps chunks broken out of the rock now when we're looking at cleavage we can talk about the cleavage, the cracks or we can talk about the space between the cracks. They're both part of the rock feature as a whole. And so here, these straight lines, labeled like S0 and S1, are bedding layers. And you see here, just like in the actual photograph, the cleavage cuts across the beds, perpendicular to the beds roughly. And if we zoom in, on a space we can see that yes it's still roughly perpendicular to the bedding plane the line going across but it's not perfect 90 degrees all the time the cleavage can curve and bend as it's going through this imperfect rock just like when we talked about fractures curving before because of imperfections in the rock we can see that here now right where the rock is cracking we call that the cleavage domain all the space in between you know between one crack and the next crack the space that's not cracked is the microlithon this is a small piece of rock microlith so it's the small space in the rock between the cracks Now, in foliations, there are four basic types, four planar features. So this is not the lineations. These are all the planar foliations. There are four basic types. We can have slaty cleavage. Again, not a very good term to type into Google, but if you look up slaty cleavage, you'll see that it's seen commonly in slate, which is where it gets the name. This is very fine, straight, flat, planar cleavage. This is so flat and smooth when it cracks that this is actually how you could get the old style blackboards. They were made of slate. They weren't man-made. At a lot of places they still are actually made of slate. And people could you know with proper equipment very carefully crack it and it would split into the big smooth surface now phyllitic cleavage on the other hand again named for what it's found in commonly which is phyllite is still very fine but somewhat wavy it's not a totally flat smooth surface like in slate 
So phyllitic cleavage is kind of a wavy plane. It's not a, a true plane in a mathematic sense. Schistosity is what we see in schist. It's fairly fine, but not nearly as fly, fine as in slate and phyllite. Often it looks kind of like fish scales because it's very, very mica-rich whenever there's schist. As long as it's, um, you know, well, generally it's very fish scaly. Sometimes it's like little fine needles. Nisosity, found in nice, can be medium to coarse. This is visually color banding, and it's due to minerals migrating during um, metamorphism and migrating to cluster together in bands. And so if we have granite, for example, we have a nice randomized mixture of pink and gray and a little bit of black and a little bit of white. When we take and we metamorphose that and we get nice, then we have white bands and gray bands and pink bands and black bands. And it's, you know, sometimes the bands are continuous, sometimes they're short, but we're seeing these planar features where those minerals congregated together. Now, hopefully, those four terms and the four basic rock types are things you're already familiar with from your introductory geology class, whether it's you know, like a Geology 101 class or an Earth Dynamics or something like that. You should have seen those at least once, if not quite a few times.